papers that he wrote up that go with that lecture, he said that he could see a role for cotton filtered masks to um, remove particles and prevent the spread of infection. And so filtering is a really simple idea that we still use today, but actually in the modern mask there are some hidden secrets. So let's bring on our mask demo and then we'll be able to see how masks work. Okay, so we're going to start with something really basic. Imagine this net here is like a simple single layer cloth mask, a bit like a bandana or a scarf, and it's regular fibres in here. So I'm going to ask JVT to help me with this. So can you take our tray of aerosols and can you pour them through our mask? So as you can see, there are some large ones and some small ones here. And it's no accident at all that these are Boston United aerosols. So what you can see is that our mask has stopped the big aerosols, but uh, not very good uh, gamer for Boston United today because all the small aerosols have fallen through the mask. So it didn't stop those small aerosols. So let's try and solve this. We've got an option for how we can manage this. And all we can do is we're now going to put a second layer on our mask. Now this is a slightly different layer because this time, if you look at it, it's not just a nice regular layer, it's a bit more chaotic. We've got crisscrossing fibres this time. So, shall we have another go? Pour our aerosols on. And this time, you saw that the mask blocked nearly all of them. There were a few that escaped around the sides, but it blocked all of the small ones and all of the large ones here. And this process of blocking is something called inertial impaction. It's basically where the aerosols that are trying to get through the fibres of the mask essentially collide with the fibres. And even if the gaps in the mask are quite big compared to the size of the aerosol, they still collide as they try and weave their way through all this fabric. But we have a problem with one size of aerosols, the ones that are just less than a micron, the ones about 0.5 micron, they are harder to trap and they sometimes sneak through on air currents. So to solve this, some masks have a hidden force and we're going to demonstrate this force. So what we have here is a Van de Graaff generator and this generates an electric field. So we like to turn it on JVT. So now we're going to generate an electric field. I've got some, some tiny aerosols here, polystyrene balls. And if I bring it close to the generator, you see them jumping? They jump onto the generator as the electrostatic field grabs hold of them. Okay, let's do some around the front. Okay, so that causes those aerosols to stick. Perhaps we'll turn it off now before we electrocute ourselves. Okay, and this process is actually used in masks. So some of the medical grade masks actually have fibres inside them that are charged, they carry an electrostatic charge and they can cause those smallest aerosols to stick. So, as you can see, there's some quite amazing science going in on inside a modern medical mask. And you may have heard of the N95 mask, but actually in medicine we call it a respirator. And the N95 mask, one like this, has multiple layers inside it and electrostatic charging. So if we go over to my picture over here, we can have a look. And this is essentially a mesh sandwich. So you can see the two slices of bread. They're the kind of more normal mask layers. But in the middle, there is this purple filling, sandwich filling. And those purple fibres, as you can see, they're very random and very chaotic in how they're laid down and they also have an electrostatic charge on them. And that's what's inside an, an N95 mask. Some larger studies in the population are beginning to show that when we all wear face coverings in crowded indoor settings, 
this does actually help to reduce the spread of many respiratory viruses, including COVID. Let's now go over to Kath, who should be on the grand staircase. <laughs> 